Splish Splash softening styrene's foremost filaments fails fusing and an any cubic cobra 3 that caught fire. Because wordplay is not appropriate there. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 173. Let's get into it. Starting off with a tag from Mr. Robert Drake saying, I thought this might make it into a print fix Friday at 3D underscore Musketeers. And if you happen to use the Twitters or the X's or whatever it is, you can tag us. You can tag us on any of the social media platforms. We'd love to get some fan submissions. Splash Guard and Heat Resistant ASA from Polymaker with magnet sticking to the frying pan takes away 80% of the grease splashes treated with acetone for easy rinsing. They also handles dishwasher. I call it an unidentified frying object. I call it a great way to put microplastics into your body. Now, I'm not gonna get into the whole discussion regarding nonstick cookware, but you can literally buy splash guards at the dollar store. I'm sorry, the dollar 25 store. That would outperform this every single day of the week and they're made of metal. Please do not use 3D printing when it involves food. Yes, there are some technologies that are body safe and food safe. FDM 3D printing is not one. And before you finish your comment, but Grant, it's covered with acetone. It doesn't matter. You can literally still see the layer lines, which means you can't get that clean, which means it's not food safe. Also, magnets don't like to get very hot. I would guess that eventually the magnetism is going to wear off and... ASA is only really good to like 100, 110 degrees Celsius. Eventually, this thing is going to fail and melt into your food. So please don't do this. Just go spend the $1.25 plus tax and go get it from the $1.25 tree. Please and thank you. There are times in this world to use 3D printing and there are times to just be smart about it. Let's go with the latter one on this one. There are better ways to do this. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. But I'd like to know from you all, what do you think of this? I guess in a pinch it would work, but something tells me you could run to the store and back before all of this printed, got acetone smooth, put together, magnets installed and everything. I don't know, would love to know your thoughts down below and have a rational discussion about why cookie cutters are technically okay, but also technically not okay. Love to know your thoughts down in those comments. Next up from Reddit, Note52s says, something's wrong with my bed's level. We got an Anchor Make M5C here and hilariously, I've been dealing with like three separate M5Cs having problems over the past couple of days. From the one that we actually unboxed on the channel that I ended up giving to the better three quarters brother, cause he really wanted a 3D printer, to one from a local fan who reached out and actually got some time with us where we went through it and made sure everything was okay to this one now on Reddit where we're seeing the front left corner of the build plate not sticking. They said the leveling on my bed seems warped. One end of the printer is significantly closer to the nozzle than the other corners. Bottom left is too close. So the offset is set to like 0 0.06, they tried negative 0 0.06 all the way up to 0.15 and negative 0.15. The problem persists in different ways. Any way to resolve this aside from just setting the printer back and grabbing a different model? I tried tightening the bed screws underneath. It felt like one of them just continuously spun. So I'm leaning on that it's a manufacturer defect. Now, I'm fairly certain the M5C does not have the screws at the four corners. If it does, and one of them is spinning infinitely, that's a problem. My assumption was that the screws they were working on were the ones for the actual V rollers on the bed. And one of those will spin infinitely. It's an eccentric nut and that's what it's supposed to do. That's fine. You know, that That's what you want. Already discussed about bed prep, making sure they're cleaning it. They apparently wash it with hot water and dish soap, which is good. We do personally recommend to use some ammonia based glass cleaner. It seems to work better and is a lot less labor than the hot water and dish soap. But looking at this print overall, yeah, I'd agree. The front left corner of this isn't sticking great. And you can see it actually happens kind of right toward the center of the plate down. So yes, my opinion here is that you have the front left corner of your machine that is too low. Now, what can cause this? The Anchormake M5C is a V-wheeled bed slinger 3D printer. And personally, 
I think for its price point at around 300 bucks, I think there are better machines out there for the money. But hey, sometimes you got to work with what you got. It is a really pretty package, but that pretty package makes it difficult to work on. Some things you're going to want to check is to make sure that the actual hot end itself, which is here in that enclosure, all four screws on the back are tight. There should be two above the two V wheels on the top, and then there should be two next to either of the two V wheels on the bottom. They're much harder to see. The tools that Anchor Make gives you are more than enough to work on the machine, so you should be okay there. Check to make sure those are tight. The machine uses the nozzle and a strain gauge to verify that everything is right for the bed level. So it's odd to me that it could be off this far. I would check if the machine does have some sort of manual adjustment for the bed level that you're able to adjust it. And you would find those near the corners, so somewhere back here on the build plate itself. If it doesn't have that, then yeah, we're going toward a mechanical issue, unfortunately, that you might not be able to resolve. So I would like to make sure that the eccentric nuts are tight on both the top and the bottom. We actually did an entire video on this and we'll card to it so you guys can take a look. But beyond that, your bed prep's fine. The rest of it looks okay. Yeah, I might also have to push for mechanical issues. If this is your first 3D printer, these kind of things happen and it's totally okay, issues happen. If you do decide to send it back, might we recommend the FlashForge AD5M? It is called the Poverty P1P in the Discord because it is roughly the same price as this machine. It's a Core XY rather than a bed slinger, and it is about the same size, last I checked as well, about a 220 cube for about 300 bucks. It's basically a small version of the Bamboo P1P without having to give Bamboo Lab your money. So hey, there's some value to that as well. I do prefer trying to get something running because this is a great opportunity for a learning experience. So I'd love to know from you all, if you have an Anchor Make M5C, can you adjust the bed knobs on the bottom if there are any? And if there aren't, what do you suggest that this user does other than call up Anchor Make and say, hey, she no worky, take her back. Love to know your thoughts. Next up from our Patreon Discord, which you can join at the $10 tier and hire via any of the links in that description down below. Whether it's PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel members, $10 tier and hire gets you to come hang out with us where well, we do live streams in there every now and then. Just hanging out and, you know, at least try to be in the chat a couple of times a week to say hi and see what people are up to. This is from Decaf Hemlock, who's got a Sovel SV08 with the enclosure. Sovel, I want to get one of those enclosures. I'm very interested to see how it performs. It looks like they've got a Fiztech build plate on this thing, and their claim was it looked fine when they went to bed. And yep, I can agree with that. It looks like your first few layers look great. And then someone called Marshall Mathers over here because it got really angry. Exactly how this occurred, I'm not certain. What we can see is it did skip quite a few layers before it really started to get rough. It looks like it was maybe trying to do some sort of a solid layer, maybe something warped up, the machine ran into it, and, you know, these kind of things happen. If you're not averse to having internet-connected devices, putting something like Obico, which is formerly known as the Spaghetti Detective, on your machine, or Octo everywhere, there are tons of these different plugins that will monitor your 3D print via a cloud service and alert you if things are looking a little bit rough with your Pepto-Bismol colored filament, then that's a great option. Another option is obviously like a wise cam or a cheap webcam or some sort of IP camera that you could use to monitor it remotely, but of course, if all else fails and you're asleep, I'm sure there's some way to make it internet connected where it sets off a 120 decibel alarm in your bedroom. I'm not saying you should do that, but it's an option. Best solution here, verify the G-code is okay. You can have issues where G-code does get corrupted. Try to get rid of all the extra garbage and see if you can determine what the actual failure mode was. If it was something where you had a corner that lifted up a little bit and the printer rammed into it, let's look at either raising your temperatures, lowering your fan speed, a combination of the two, or because this is an enclosed machine, maybe let that bed heat soak a little bit longer. I'm actually not certain what material it is, but 
showing 240 on the nozzle tells me it could be PLA or it could be PETG. And 94 on the bed seems very high, but I would look to make sure that your settings are also appropriate. This could just be a case of bad settings. There is going to be some damage done here. Um, we can see one of the cooling fans sitting over there, the front cover sitting there. Where the cooling fan actually goes on this off the top of my head, I have no clue. I have not used my SV08 since coming back from smurf and a little bit of extra stuff which you guys will see if you do get subscribed we hung out with construct 3d for a couple of days got to see some of their awesome clients and people that they work with and then we spent quite a bit of time over at prague because we absolutely love the czech republic in that area videos coming soon much sooner than last time, but if you do want to see our entire tour of Prusa research, we'll card to that playlist so you all can take a look. Now, with the full video, almost an hour and a half of a tour of Prusa research. So moving on, this is where spare parts absolutely come in and make all of the difference. Having spare fans, that front cover's probably fine. Extra filament, obviously. All of that starts to matter and really play a part into keeping machines running long term. I know for us, we keep thermistors, heaters, hot ends, nozzles, fans, and like, you know, there's just a couple of spare belts. We of course keep oil and other lubricant. And sometimes like for the Prusas and things, we have spare boards, but for individual printers, I can totally understand not keeping spare electronics around. But if you're doing this as a hobby, definitely take a look at stuff like that. And if you think I missed anything, let me know in the comments. would love to see what else you all keep in stock. This one's thrown me for a bit of a loop. We've got an Anycubic Cobra 3 here that uh, someone apparently decided that one of those snake firework things was the right thing to put inside of it. This is a printer that actually caught fire. And I'm told it comes from the Anycubic Cobra 3 Facebook group. And when I search the Anycubic Cobra 3 Facebook group, I find other machines that caught fire. Although this one eh, potentially could be the user's fault. I'm a little bit worried. Anyways, we'll have to do a bit of a deep dive on that. But I'll need to get a Cobra 3 first. Hi, Anycubic. I'd love to get one. Just don't hate me. I'm just reporting on things. The story is from the 3D printing Belgian saying they had no mods. Someone heard the fire alarm and they came back to a burning printer. It's not their machine. It's somebody else's off of Facebook. And as 3DX Tech says, hopefully it's not another recall worthy situation. 3D printer fires are real. It is a real risk even with modern machines. It is why, unfortunately, we as content creators have effectively been tasked with making sure that machines are safe. And if you're saying, Grant, machines are safe, come on. No, they're not, and we've proven this recently with the Chidi Plus 4, where we had the original SSR board reach over 200 degrees Celsius before we finally ended the test out of desire to not burn my garage down. Looking at this, though... I can't immediately determine what went wrong. Traditionally speaking, it's going to be an electrical issue. Whether it's wires that shorted out, or maybe it was a MOSFET that locked closed because MOSFETs latch when they fail, or for some reason, thermal runaway didn't work. I, there's no way for us to know without being an actual fire inspector. So if you are a fire inspector, I don't know, let me know. I guess we got a lot of charring up here. This is just extra heat and charring from God knows what caught fire down here. We can definitely see some wiring that is absolutely charred. And that is my best assumption to have an actual hot end itself. Catch fire is way more difficult than you think. Even a small amount of cooling on it will keep it from catching fire. This is more likely than not in my non-professional opinion, a wiring issue. Now, I don't have a Cobra 3 to verify and look at, but a lot of these newer machines have daughter boards. These daughter boards, if the connection is a little bit loose, can get proper toasty and catch fire. Those connectors should be fire rated or at least fire retardant so that they don't spread a fire. This user is exceedingly lucky that they were home and they heard their fire alarm. We would have seen a really really serious problem but i would like an investigation on this and when i search for it i don't find that actual post what i find is this one 
another Cobra 3 that also caught proper fire. This is, again, like a legit fire, not just something getting toasty. We can see the part down there actually fully melted that they were printing. Because there's more than one, I can't immediately say it's not the printer's fault, but I would like to do an investigation. Any cubic, if you are watching this or you do see this, I would like to get one of your machines to do this investigation on. I'd like to work with you to try to determine if there are any issues so that we can get them solved immediately. We don't want to see more issues like this in the industry. And if there are any fire hazards, we want to get them resolved as quickly as possible before any further damage is caused. Last but not least, from Nepomuk in our Discord server, Nepo has been dealing with her machine constantly either fully overheating, fully disconnecting, or thermally running away on her. And we figured it out. It turns out, yeah, copper and or aluminum in this case, work hardens over time, the wire snapped, and in some little places it would connect together and work totally fine. But when you start to speed it up, it gets really rough. That's a big bummer with 3D printers that use, you know, big cables like this worth of copper wire. If it's not done perfectly, even if it is done perfectly, you will have stress and strain in here that over time work hardens and causes a failure of the wire. How do you solve this? There's not a great way to solve this other than keep an eye on things, make sure no cables are being crimped or messed with and make sure that there is an appropriate amount of slack where it can be in these cables but hey no better time than to upgrade to can or just say screw it get a whole new printer that was a recommendation in the discord server so I'm, I'm i'm going with it we're glad that the incident was found but it can certainly be one of those that you just want to bang your head against the table or bang your head against the frame if you're me because i have to wear hard hats when we stream now the human mind oh, this much. All the girls don't be like this. ow son of a because you can't figure it out and it's something as simple as a wire fault it's even worse when it happens inside of the wire and you can't see it because the insulation still covers it has this one happened to you guys i'd love to know down in those comments and hey while you're down there don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed and a huge thank you to all of our channel member supporters whose names listed right next to me at the five dollar tier and higher thank you for what you all do in making these videos possible right below me will be the entire print fix friday series so if you do want to catch up on over three years of content you can do so and enjoy it it's great for newbies and veterans alike right next to that will be our entire playlist of the tour of prusa research and hey just for staying this long you get to see a funny photo of me that amber took while we were in Prague. That is all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones and don't post photos like that in your Discord when your editors also monitor it because they will put you on funny backgrounds. And as always, keep making awesome. Oh yeah, Happy New Year. Take care.